measuring your head for a wig. I have with me the wonderful Pia, our ambassador, who is going to share with us <laughs> some of her experiences of um, having her head measured, um, the way in which she chooses sizes, uh, and then we'll go on to demonstrate how to measure. Pia. Perfect. Hi. <laughs> um, so my experience um, with measuring my head um, was non-existent when I started wearing wigs. Um, the first time that I went into a wig shop, my head wasn't measured. I was just given an average um, cap size wig. Um, so actually my, um, I started measuring my head way down the line um, after you know a couple of years of um, wearing wigs. Um, Incidentally, just because I saw a video on social media um, and uh, I've been always using um, average size wigs and actually uh, I think by John Renault standards, I'm a petite. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting um, to see that. I, I think that's a lot of people's experience, especially when they sort of dive into the wig world without any guidance from a, um, a specialist. Um, that they just don't get their head measured and you end up using uh, a wrong wig size, which can lead to, you know, headaches if it's too small, um, excessive sort of bagginess in different areas. Um, and it's just, it makes the whole wig wearing experience much more uncomfortable. And I think um, when we talk about priorities in wig wearing, we do try to put fit at the very top because exactly as you're saying that comfort factor um, is the most important and when you're new and you go into a wig shop or you try something on you're only trying something on momentarily and yeah. you might feel and trust in what you're being told and it might feel okay at the time uh, but I know that from my experience um I, I've worn things that have been far too big and just accepted that that pain behind my ear, that cutting behind my ear was just the way it was. Um, but you soon come to realize that no, there is a better scenario. Um, I think that the wig industry, the stock wig industry is growing and growing and, I, and we can see that lots of brands are introducing more of their uh, styles in petites and large, whereas before there was a very small pool of those options. Um, but of course, I've said, you know, in the past that if we can take a bit of control over that element and understand our own head, as it were, we'll know what we're looking for. So as Pia said, by John Renault standards, she is a petite, um, but has always been wearing average and now ha has this kind of understanding of why it's bagging here or, or bagging in other areas. My issue is, is very similar. I'm a petite average by measurement standards, but if I go too small, I find that I struggle with this, this measurement, albeit this area is super snug. So without trying to confuse and overwhelm people, we are going to look at how to measure but also have a conversation about understanding those measurements and, and how those measurements impact on the way the wig may sit on your head. Um, so you often, I often find that somebody will just give me, they'll say, I'm an average, my circumference is, but I think that it's important to have all of these other measurements. Um, Pia, is that, has that been your experience in terms of, a measurement, um, just taking one measurement or when you've thought about your own head size, like how you went about it? 
Yes, um, exactly. It was just one measurement. And I have been asked, asked by um, some wig uh, sellers uh, for my circumference, only my circumference. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think it's important to take um, well, the measurements that we, we will be showing, uh, because you might, like what, what you said, you might measure up differently. Um, your circumference might be large, but, you know, front to back might be something else and then ear to ear is something else. So, um, yes, like you said, again, without trying to overwhelm someone um, that's just getting started, it is important to have those measurements to um, better make a decision in terms of, right, which wig size will be best for me and the most comfortable fit, even if it means that, you know, it's, it might be a little bit baggy or I might have to have it altered a little bit to make it um, fit a bit more snug. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, a really important part of the process. And at the end of the day, um, you know, wigs are quite costly and uh, the intention is for them to last the longest period of time and be as comfortable as possible. Mm. And you mentioned their alterations and we'll talk about the kinds of alterations that can be made and that will help inform you in terms of if your measurements are slightly odd, what do you go for? So we will talk about the kinds of alterations that can be made. So that's great. Um, I want to kind of guide you in terms of um, measuring your head. So what people, what you'll need is just a standard soft tape measure, a kind of seamstress tape measure. Uh, mine's got inches and centimeters. It doesn't matter as long as you indicate what you've taken the measurement in. Okay. Um, there are some, some people use retractable ones. John and I don't do a lovely retractable tape measure, but I like the standard, <laughs> but it really doesn't matter. I've also had people when we've doing when we've done online consultations where they haven't got one of these, we've done um, used a piece of string, and then measured that piece of string against. So if you've got a uh, like a builder's tape measure that's metal and you know won't wrap round, you can then use a piece of string and then measure it on on measure the piece of string. So there are ways around it. <laughs> so um, on our website, and you'll find on lots of you know, um, wig store websites or, you know, lots of information about how to measure, you'll find some the guide. So this is a John Renault guide um, and it does help you to take the measurement and then establish where you might sit. Um, but all brands will have their own guide. So it's worth seeking that out. If you, for example, are looking particularly at, let's say a Raquel Welsh, maybe look for their guide as well, because it's, it's like clothing, isn't it? We come to learn that that store is a bit big, that store doesn't work for me in that size, which isn't helpful, is it? But it's just the way it is. So we're going to start with the basic three measurements. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about additional measurements that someone might need or might ask for, so it's worth taking. Right, so the first one is the circumference. Now the circumference obviously is all the way around your head. But I've had people give me circumference measurements and they've said, I've done it three times and it's lots of different measurements. So it's all about finding the right spot. So if you remember, like for like myself and Pia, I don't know if we even remember where our hairline was, uh, but we have to do our best <laughs> to find where our hairline was. And we take that and we, wrap it, so Pia will be able to demonstrate better. We wrap it and we make sure it goes behind the ear. So not on top, it needs to sit snug behind the ear. And then in terms of where it sits at the back, if we bend, we start by bending. So I always say to people, do it that way first, find the back and bring it over. And bring it over, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it over the ears. And you see how it just suddenly sits a bit better, doesn't it? It's, rather than trying yeah. to go from here to here. So I'm going to write here's circumference. So in centimeters, that would be.
54. 54. You don't have inches on yours, so let me do no. a little rough. Uh, that's 21 and a half. <clears throat> now, when you lay it out like that, that's, that's a big head. <laughs> Um, then ear to ear. Now there's lots of ways of doing ear to ear, but we're going to do the John Renault way, first of all, then I'll talk about different ear to ear measurements. Now, some people mistake it for this, but it's not. You have to measure from your hairline first. And um, so it's seven inches back. So for you, Pia, that would be 18 centimeters. So seven inches or 18 centimeters back from your hairline. And effectively you're finding that kind of crown or occipital bone, I think we call it. And then you take it there and there. That's it. Yeah. So through there, right. Yeah, through there. Because it's that. Yeah that we need to find. So that's an ear to ear. So that is 30 and a half. Some people also call it ear crown to ear crown. So ear to ear, right, 30 and a half. Um, Thirty and a 12 inches. Then our front to back, <clears throat> it's the same. I always do it the same as the circumference. I find the back by putting the end. So you find that nape crease and then you bring it over to your hairline. That is 31. 31. Hang on, 30, oh yeah, 31, 12 and a quarter. Right, I'm just gonna do two additional um, <clears throat> sizes just so I have them. Now we've done ear crown to ear crown, which was that seven back. I also want ear front to ear front, so so at the top of your, so hang on. Where, just in front, just at that edge there. Right there. So not behind, so where you're, that's it, exactly there. Over, across your hairline. That's it. That's it. That is 29. 29, so much smaller than 11 and a quarter. And then this one's really important for me because I have a slightly flatter head. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not full as it were. So this is called temple back to temple. So it's temple, so where your temples are. Okay. Yeah, and then straight around the back. So temple to back to temple. Because I struggle in that. I've never I, taken this one. Yeah, because this is my smallest measurement, which is why I get baggy here. It's like a saggy empty <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me do that again. Right. 36. I'm just out of interest going to do mine. Thirty-three, you see? Ah, okay. Quite, it's quite a difference, isn't it? So thirty-six for you is thirty-six is fourteen. Okay. So let's have a look at these measurements for Pia. So circumference 21 and a half. Uh, I'm going to work in inches and I think people is an average. 
Her ear to ear at 12 inches is a child. Ah. Yeah. Wow. So um, ear to ear was the, going to the crown. Was, yeah, and then that's it. So that's quite a small measurement there. And that's very interesting because you did mention earlier when we were chatting, you had bunching. It's that bagginess. Yeah. yeah the and size. That, that size kind of uh, proves that. Um, 12 and a quarter front to back, again, is really small. And then we have 29 is coming up as an average in that average 29 yeah that's an average there that was the the ear to here the, the, okay yeah and the temple back to temple back was coming up as a petite as well so that just proves the conversation that we were having earlier, that when you measure yourself, you almost don't know what to do with these numbers. So whereas if you go to a salon, your specialist will say, I understand the wigs, I know which ones we're looking at, I know what having it larger in this area might look like or what that might do. As an independent buyer, online for example navigating this independently that's a bit of a minefield isn't it of information so what i would suggest are the two most important measurements the ones which um it's easier to rectify uh via an alteration any other areas that are too big the main thing is do not go too small there's just, you know, mm. making something larger whilst it's possible is, you know, so you can, you can make the circumference a teeny bit bigger, um, but you mu you, we much rather make things smaller. So because Pia's circumference is sitting very neatly in an average, um, and then the, this, ear to ear is sitting in an average those are the two this measurement and this measurement are the two most important ones so if those are an average always opt for average if those are a petite fine go for a petite because what you'll find is that if although there's petite here there's lots of petite yes appear in this cap area imagine the structure of a wig the cap area is the the bent you know the the i'm gonna get a cap i've got one the cap area is we can manipulate these areas are structure so anything with a structure is harder to adjust if we remember that it's easy to understand why because look i mean instantly you know that i can make that smaller that's not how we do it but <laughs> we can deal with something being big here we can't deal so much with something being big here and the lace front you can't touch so if if something is too small here you're going to have an ear tab that's far too high and if a circumference is too small well of course you're going to have marks it's going to hurt you're going to get headaches all of those things so it's interesting Obviously, Pia said that she's been wearing an average, but explain to me um, perhaps where you felt something hasn't fit right and what that has caused or the problems that you've encountered from that. Yeah. So my main, main issues with an average cap um, have been mainly the sagging here and some with some caps or brands as well, a little bit at the back. Yeah. Um, I've never had issues with um, the circumference feeling um, excessively tight. Maybe um, every now and then with a specific brand or a specific style, um, which can happen across the same style as well. I might have 
two John Renault Serras and then one might feel a little bit tighter than the other, even though they're the same size. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, and referring back to those two main uh, measurements that you said, so the circumference, which I'm an average in, that's always felt fine. And mm -hmm. then my ear tabs have always sat where I feel that they should be sitting. So down here as opposed to up here. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're so you're you're feeling that there's some excess fabric. Yeah. And I can always I can always sort of pinch the excess um, fabric. Yeah. And that's interesting because effectively that's how we would resize. Um, we we look at the cap on the person um, and we think where is it naturally wanting to fold? And so if it naturally folds there, then obviously we'll turn it inside out and we put um, almost like a dart. We don't cut anything out. We work with that natural fold and we stitch to just put it in place. For me, it's either here, depending on the brand, like I can lift, this mm. is perfect, but it doesn't lift, or it just kind of finds its way and all of the excess fabric sits at the back at the nape so I have this bunching at the nape and again that natural bunching we find and we will sew that's on a hand tied cap on a wefted cap it's much much easier <clears throat> um, on a wefted cap we would again feel that where that excess is and you can physically remove a single weft or two or three and then what that does is that creates less bagging and bunching mm. um, but for me it's there are kind of standard ways to resize if you haven't got your client there but quite often we're able to get on a zoom consultation <laughs> and ask you it takes time to like explain where it is and then we'll take a measurement roughly um, so things can be done remotely still um, but when you're in salon, we can really find it, we'll pin it and we'll fix that for you. And that's, that's important to know that that option is available so that when you buy, you buy knowing that it doesn't have to fit perfectly in this area because that can be adjusted as long as I'm not struggling with how tight it is here and it, these aren't too high. Um, yeah, I think that's, and I suppose we're talking about being being able to access salons or working online, so you have to approach it differently. If you're working online and you know that you've got a particularly, uh, you've got difficult needs as it were, so you expect that it will need an adjustment, buy from somewhere that offers that as well. Because if you buy from them knowing that it needs an adjustment, then you have a conversation with them about that prior to buying it. They can advise you as well because Pia knows as well because she's worn wigs across brands that even though we've established average, average for one brand and average for another brand uh, can feel very different depending on the cap size, uh, the, sorry, the cap construction and the brand. So I don't know if you can identify one's uh, that you particularly notice were two average sizes that felt very different? Yeah, so um, for example, my, where is she? Tatum um, from Renee of Paris, average size, and the, I can't wear her because she gives me a headache, but just the, right. the conference is way too tight. Um, so yeah, she's, she's going yeah. to your wig bank. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Tatum is correct me if I'm wrong she's from the Amore yes Amore yeah and Amore we know come up uh they, they work for me because they're not quite petite but they're on the petite side ah, so okay. they work for me so Amore come up smaller but you've got Raquel Welsh they come yeah. up big don't they yes they do. I can't wear a wefted Raquel Welsh because it comes up much too big, really low ear tabs. So you might say, oh, I'm sitting on, a, on an average, maybe large. I might say to you, the average in, in Raquel Welsh is worth trying first rather than the average in Amore. So you're still 
going to perhaps need a conversation with someone. So, yes. um, and we, you know, I know that the pandemic has created many, many problems, but it has um, enabled lots of places to develop a more virtual service. So actually, I think we're in a time where you feel like you can just say, right, can I have a Zoom consult? These things weren't happening as much. Is that fair to say, Tia? Yeah, I mean, from your original experience, the contact uh, virtually is is growing. And I think that's a positive uh, uh, yeah, symptom, as it were, of, of the pandemic. OK, um, I don't know if there's anything else that we haven't mentioned in terms of measuring our heads. Um, not that I can think of. <laughs> no, I mean, it is interesting. I've said before that, you know, some salons as a standard don't do it. And I, and I know, of course, if you put something on, you'll know if it fits or not. But I like to have information. And I think if, um, if as a, uh, a customer, let's say, mm -hmm. you know what your measurements are, um, it's a bit like when you have your eyes tested. I always ask for my... <laughs> my prescription to take it away because it's my information so you know if you're having your head measured don't just let them have that information and without passing it on to you as well so ask for that as well definitely take it away yeah and and i think um going back to what we said at the beginning um you you know you know when something fits or it doesn't fit mm. when you've had the experience of using that product mm. uh, but when it's your first time first couple of times um, wearing a wig you don't know what it's supposed to feel like um, no. uh, so yeah getting getting a good fit is super important mm -hmm. I remember um, buying a piece a while ago um, and you know when I put it on it felt right I had to make a couple of tweaks myself uh, and I remember going out for a day of shopping and it must have been about three hours in I was in absolute agony and that's quite a long time and what was happening was it was just sitting just too close to the top of my ear and it felt and obviously sitting and rubbing and sitting and rubbing and I ended up with like like a blister behind my ear and that's a long time of wearing it when it's sat on the head and you're not moving you think oh this is a really good fit like for me dealing with things that were too big for so long that felt oh that that feels right that feels snug that feels good but you can't know that until you're wearing it for a while so the yes. idea that you just put it on is great um so knowing what to look for and I did a video um it, I used a folia as an example but I did a video about looking when you put a, a wig on and feeling and figuring out how much space is the right space above the ear and the sorts of things that might cause you discomfort. So that's worth considering taking a look at as well. Okay, well, um, I think we've covered everything and I hope that's been helpful for everyone. Um, thank you to Pia. And the next episode will be looking at all the hundreds and thousands of wig cap types <laughs> Uh, to hopefully um, educate you further. So uh, look out for that.